10's Late News with Tracy Spicer. Tonight, two men survive 14 days adrift on a life raft after several ships miss them in rough seas off Queensland. A horror start to the weekend on Australian roads. And American pilots charged over a deadly friendly fire incident in Afghanistan. Good evening. First tonight, charges that several ships ignored two men adrift in a life raft off Queensland. They were rescued today, dehydrated and suffering exposure after 14 days on the raft with little water and scant emergency rations. Left for dead by merchant ships, but finally back on dry land. Stephen Wong and Jack Heather surviving an incredible fortnight, drifting in a life raft off southern Queensland. We thought we were dead. Definitely thought we were dead. Shielded by overzealous hospital security guards after being winched by helicopter from a fishing trawler 40 nautical miles off the coast. Devotion, devotion, rescue Weak and dehydrated, the men were taken aboard the trawler this morning that existed on a two-day supply of rations. Spirits certainly lifted once they realised that uh, they were going to make it home all right. After two lonely weeks in a life raft, the men are absolutely livid. They claim they were seen by three ships and one fishing vessel, but all refused their pleas for help. And you're in such dire need for help. Just couldn't believe that someone could turn away like that. Heading to Numea from the Gold Coast, their fishing boat sank on Father's Day, along with a vital electronic positioning beacon. There's a few things that went wrong. Uh, we had engine problems, we had a lot of smoke and everything, and uh, we thought we had a fire on board at one stage, and we had a six metre swell running, and we were getting hit by lots of different things at one time. The men remain under observation in hospital. Darren Roberts, 10 News. A horror start to the weekend on Australian roads with fatal smashes claiming 14 lives already. Two men died when their Corolla and a four-wheel drive collided on an open stretch of road south of Brisbane. A third vehicle slammed into the rear of the four-wheel drive. Seven other people were injured. The, the road is dry. Uh, there's there's no, been no rain. Uh, there's no apparent reason uh, in terms of weather conditions for the incident. In New South Wales, six people have died, including the driver of this sedan. The 34-year-old man apparently lost control on the M4 motorway, his vehicle flipping over a guardrail. And in Melbourne, a learner driver and a 12-year-old boy died during a police chase. The victim's car split in two after the driver lost control and it slammed into a power pole at high speed. The 1989 Commodore sedan was stopped for speeding on Mount Dandenong Road in Croydon but then took off and was chased by a police officer in an unmarked vehicle. The police keeping pace during the high-speed pursuit, which came to its tragic end when the learner driver attempted to overtake another vehicle on Wonga Road, Ringwood, lost control and struck a power pole. But I do believe they were, you know, relatively... Uh, it, it, he was within sight of the other car. Local residents described hearing an explosion at the moment of impact, leaking fuel and power lines providing a hazard for rescue workers. The double tragedy comes eight days after the death of a man at Wandong following a high-speed police chase along the Hume Highway. Police and the coroner to investigate, relatives of the victims left to commiserate. I lost my, my nephew. Twelve years old. Cameron Bow, 10 News. Thousands of Perth homes are still without power after a wild storm swept the city, bringing driving rain and wind gusts of up to 100 kilometres an hour that brought down power lines. The fierce storm crossed the coast about 1.30 this afternoon. It whipped up the seas and sent spray across coastal roads. This Kuwaiti sheep ship broke its moorings in the choppy seas. Amid fears it could crash into the Fremantle Rail Bridge two tugs were brought in to keep the vessel from its destructive path. Wind gusts of up to 100 kilometres an hour have battered the metropolitan area with reports of widespread minor damage. Trees were blown across roads, cars and homes. Roofs were lifted, power lines were brought down. We've got a, about three or four power lines down here. It almost sounds like they might be having a busy day. 45,000 homes were left in the dark the state emergency service had more than 170 calls for help. The wild weather whipped up a massive dust storm at Burswood Casino, 
Sheets of roofing smashed this petrol pump at Maddington. 19 millimetres of rain was dumped in the metropolitan area since 9 o'clock this morning. The blustery conditions and rain are expected to continue overnight. Simon Meany, 10 News. Medical experts are disputing claims that the federal government's rejection of paid maternity leave could lead to an increase in breast cancer. Sex Discrimination Commissioner Prue Goward says breastfeeding helps prevent cancer. She says returning to work soon after childbirth discourages breastfeeding and increases the risk of the disease. The government says it can't afford the cost of fully funded maternity leave, which it says would cost $400 million a year. What I've um, been talking about is a minimum wage scheme uh, and it's less than half of um, that option. We've got to make sure that women can afford to stay home for the first three months of a child's life. Still ahead in Tens Lake News, American fighter pilots charged over friendly fire casualties in Afghanistan. A full terrorism alert in Florida turns out to be an ill-conceived prank. And Britain's wild royal prepares for his coming of age. You'll love the lines. Hasta la vista, baby. And you know all the seeds. It must be destroyed. So if you think you've seen better... Listen to me very carefully. For the first time, digitally remastered. It's definitely you. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come with me if you want to live. Linda Hamilton. Fire in the hole! Edward Furlong. You just can't go around killing people. Why? James Cameron's mega action masterpiece. Hasta la vista, baby. T2 goes digital. 8.30 Sunday on 10. There's still a lot of uh, people who are not aware that we have female pilots. In Arianjar to support the drought relief, we were taking food out to the local villages and supplying seedlings and small fish to restock their areas. For me personally, it's incredibly challenging and uh, incredibly exhilarating. The ring has been found. The motion picture phenomenon is now on video and DVD. Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Yours to own on video and DVD. What are you doing this weekend? Come and see Car City's Eye Popping Specials. Over 300 Holdens to choose from. Over 300 Fords to choose from. Over 300 four-wheel drive sports cars and light commercials to choose from. These specials and 2,000 more available right now. Grab your mother-in-law, your wife, and whoever else needs that special car and come to Car City Ringwood. We will make your eyes pop. Keep your eyes open for a bargain. Car City! Think your hair is healthy? Think again. There are six symptoms of unhealthy hair, and one conditioner treats them all. Pantene Pro-V Complete Therapy Conditioner. With its pro-vitamin formula, frizzy hair becomes smooth. Dull hair, shiny. Treat all six symptoms for healthier hair. Can your conditioner do all that? Pantene Pro-V Complete Therapy Conditioner. So healthy, you'll love your hair. It's really hard to describe to someone the kinds of high-tech hardware you're responsible for as an army pilot. You know, we get to use some of the most modern equipment available. You simply don't get the chance to experience it anywhere else. You're watching Tens Lake News. Two American fighter pilots have been charged with manslaughter over one of the deadliest friendly fire incidents in the war in Afghanistan. Four Canadian soldiers died when the pilots dropped a laser-guided bomb. The investigation of the friendly fire accident that killed four Canadians near Kandahar April 17th details a laundry list of sloppy procedures and leadership failures. The report concludes the F-16 pilot who dropped the bomb, Major Harry Schmidt, a former Navy Top Gun instructor, failed to exercise proper flight discipline as a flight wingman. When the pilot thought he was threatened by ground fire, he should have increased altitude and departed the area. The flight leader, Major William Umbach, was found to have been suffering co-pilot syndrome. As an average pilot, the report finds, especially in comparison to the Top Gun reputation of his wingman, he deferred his lead responsibilities, took a passive observer role, and allowed the wingman to take actions clearly not in line with accepted procedures. 
both F-16 pilots now face court-martial on four counts of involuntary manslaughter for the four Canadians killed by the accidental bombing, and eight counts of assault for the eight wounded, plus charges for dereliction of duty. But the investigators were also highly critical of some commanders and procedures which could provide the basis of a defense if the case goes to trial. One of the world's most wanted terrorists has been captured in Pakistan. Ramzi bin al-Sheib is a member of the Al-Qaeda network and is accused of playing a direct role in the terrorist attacks on the United States. It's alleged he told Arabic news service Al Jazeera he was to be one of the hijackers but was refused entry to America. At one time, he shared a room with the suspected ringleader of the hijackers, Mohammed Atta, who called him to set the date of the attacks. It's believed the Yemeni national was one of ten al-Qaeda suspects arrested by Pakistani authorities during a raid a few days ago. And a full terrorism alert in Florida after a waitress told police three men were discussing explosions in her restaurant. Their cars were stopped soon after, but a search found nothing. When the vehicles were initially stopped, uh, bomb-sniffing dogs were called to the scene. The dogs did alert on both vehicles. Federal officials joined Florida police in questioning the men for 17 hours before deciding it was an ill-conceived prank. We'll take a closer look at the crisis over Iraq when Shadow Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd joins us as our guest on Meet the Press here on Network 10. Britain's Prince Harry is coming of age. To mark his 18th birthday, the Prince has posed for a series of personal photographs taken by Diana's favourite photographer. Prince Harry has been captured by one of the most glamorous names in the business. Mario Testino has snapped all the A-list celebrities, and he knows about flattering his subjects. Fabulous. You look very, very, very good looking, and I tell you, it's difficult. Beautiful. Incredible. Don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. And this is the first official picture to mark Prince Harry's coming of age. The photo session took place at Eton College, where the Prince is studying for his A-levels. Mario Testino was said to be the favourite photographer of Diana, Princess of Wales. He's also done shots of Prince Charles. So who's Harry like? I guess we're all a mix of, of, of our parents, and he's lucky that both his parents have, have, uh, have very good humour, and that <laughs> he's a photographer. <laughs> you too. <laughs> the past 12 months have been difficult for the Prince. Early this year, it emerged that he'd smoked cannabis and been involved in underage drinking. As he moves into adulthood, Harry hopes to adopt a more positive role, focusing on the charitable causes which his mother supported. Now for a quick look at the weather. Showers expected around Cairns and Townsville, cloudy in Brisbane, hazy for Sydney. Sunny in Canberra, Hobart and Melbourne, wet in Adelaide, clearing showers for Perth, mainly cloudy for Darwin and Alice Springs. London Fashion Week has moved up a step with what's been called typically British designs. I've been holding out so long. I've been sleeping all Today it was veteran Lord, British designers Paul Smith and Jasper Conran's turn to put their collections on the runway. And what do they envisage you wearing this season? Leather shorts and knee-high boots, if you're game. And that's the latest from the 10 Newsroom. Thanks for joining us. I'll have our next bulletin at 5.30 tomorrow evening. But stick with us now for all the action in sports tonight with Ryan Phelan. I'm Tracy Spicer. Good night. Sophie Marenkovic is leading a double life. By day. A hard-working cop. By night.